Hello everyone. I thought I'd try something different this time and start a little series on some stuff I've learned while playing Dark and Darker. This, uh, this video will be focused on creating a new character and starting your first adventure in the dungeon. In this game you can end up uh, playing by yourself with one other person or with a team of three. Since I'm playing by myself, I'll just demonstrate the way that most people play it, and that is uh, as a solo character. When you first uh, log into the game, you probably see nothing here. But what you first want to do is make a new character. For this purposes, a lot of people play fighter. I like fighter. And it's pretty much just like a generic all-rounder class. It doesn't really excel at anything. It's not really bad at anything either. So for simplicity's sake, we'll go ahead and pick fighter. Go ahead and pick your character name. And confirm. <clears throat> Congratulations, you are now the proud owner of a new level one fighter. Enter the lobby. Okay, you'll immediately notice that your guy is staring deep into your eyes. He wants you to know that it's okay. He's there for you. You can't die. It's okay. Then, you probably want to pick your perks. So you'll click class here. Perk and skill. Got a bunch of perks here. May change in the future, but this is what it is right now. Perks are your passive abilities that are always active. Skills are your cooldowns or your one-use effects that you can do in the dungeon. As a fighter starting out, I would probably recommend any of this you can read through these at your leisure but as a baby fighter your best bet would be take slayer that way you can dual wield and get some extra bonus damage in the dungeon maybe dual wield these two perks go very well together but you only have one perk slot at level one so i would just say for simplicity's sake let's go with weapon mastery this allows us to use any weapon we find in the dungeon we get a minus 10 percent physical damage penalty with it but, it's nice to be able to use any upgrade you find. For skills, I think Sprint and Second Win are the best for Fighter. There's a lot of really neat stuff in here that you can experiment with. But they're too situational to be useful at all times. And Sprint is always good. And not dying is always good. Having a heal is great. Because it doesn't really matter if you taunt the enemy. If you're dead, it doesn't matter. Extra attack speed is cool. But it doesn't matter how fast you attack if you're dead. You can see where I'm going with this. In Sprint, you may learn that in this game, if you can't catch someone as a melee character, you die every time. So now we have our beautiful fighter with his amazing bowl cut and mutton chops. He's got his hands ready to punch evil. This is where you find your stash. There's nothing here because we're level 1. So, since we're level 1, we have no gold, we can't buy anything from the merchants. You can't trade until you're level... Oh no, you can trade right away, my, my mistake. You can't, uh, you don't have any money to pay the trade fee. So you want to click play, go back here. Choose your closest server. And choose your dungeon. Currently, the game is rotating through three dungeons on a timer. The Howling Crypts are currently home to solos only. The Goblin Caves are home to solos and duos only. And the Ruins can house solos, duos, and trios. As a solo player, if you're learning the game, I really would not recommend going into the trios or duos maps. Just stick to learning the solos maps. You're much, likely, much more likely to survive as teams are usually going to gang up on you in a 1vx or a xv1 scenario and kill you. Take all your loot, then you go back to the lobby. So, you want to pick normal instead of high roller. High roller is more difficult. Normal has worse loot, but the enemies are easier, and the players are less geared. So now that you've chosen the solos map, whatever it is, because it after the timer ends, it could be the ruins or the goblin caves. So you just have to check. Make sure you're on the right map. It is the Crypts, my favorite map. So now, we have our map picked, our skills, our perks. We're ready to go on our first dungeon adventure. While you wait to go into the dungeon, you find yourself here in the lobby. 
Uh, you cannot hurt other players here. You can inspect them, see what they're wearing, see what they're doing. There's target dummies here that you can test your damage on. 41, or 42, 44, probably 46. Yep. The uh, starting armor sword, or arming sword for the fighter is not very good. So, generally in the dungeon, you're looking for an upgrade right away. You can definitely make it work, but the damage is quite low. Um, as a newbie, as a new player, you should expect to fight people who are already wearing at least white gear. So understand that maybe it's better to hide than immediately fight in your first dungeons before you get the, uh, the hang of PvP. Okay, we spawned in the dungeon. Now we start by pressing one to pull out our sword and shield. And press tab to open our inventory whenever we want. Left click will attack, right click is block. You can activate chests and doors by pressing F. And then move out of our spawn room. So immediately we are attacked by two enemies. Golbat and a skeleton. This is a good opportunity to teach you how to fight Zwyhander skeletons. I know it seems early, but just crouch and look down. They cannot hit you at all. You can also look up if you really like. You're right in front of them. You can pop them down, pop them down, pop them down. Literally that easy. found some throwing knives. These are throwing weapons and we can use them because we have weapon mastery. They're not our natural class item, but because we can use any weapon, we can use those. This is a difficult room, so if this is your first game, I recommend avoiding walking into the middle of this room. We have the skeleton archer actually who saw us and was walking towards us and stopped. But let's go the other way. So now we're in this room. We have two archers, and if you look, there's a skeleton on the ground next to that archer. So for archers, the best thing is to just sideset their arrows. You can sideset their arrows all day, and they won't hit you. They'll actually even shoot the uh, skeletons that walk towards you. If you hold your attack button, you do a little combo attack. You found some boots. Where? Cool, now we're wearing boots. You can also block arrows. Uh, we got shot by the skeleton in the back. Fortunately, he was able to hit us. It's not very good to fight two skeletons at once, to be honest. But we're doing our best. When you fight a skeleton, the first attack is always at your head. When they shoot at you. The first shot goes to your head, the second shot goes to your abdomen. Sometimes they run away too. So, block towards your head, and block towards your abdomen. Block towards your head. Head. Abdomen. Works every time. You can also just sidestep the arrows. It's usually easier to sidestep. We'll take this ammo just in case we find a ranged weapon. The skeletal um, sh shieldmen, or whatever they're called, are the easiest skeletons. They're very slow, they just walk towards you, and they have the exact same attack pattern every time. You just bait their attack, like this, and then they present their head to you for a headshot. In this game, you always want to aim for the head. It does 50% more damage, and attacks to the arms and legs do 50% less damage. So a headshot does three times as much damage as a leg shot. Uh oh. I hear another player. This is a health potion over here. Let's grab this and drink it. We might need it for the upcoming player. We'll see if they want to be friendly. I wouldn't expect 
enemy players to be friendly off the bat. We found some upgrades, actually. We found a helmet, which is very nice. Put a little helmet on. This Viking sword isn't too bad, either. I am a bit partial to the arming sword, though. We got a little buckler, too. I don't really like the buckler over the round shield, but... Eh. In this situation, maybe it's worth it. We'll wear some strength gloves. Oh, our gear is looking pretty good. Our strength's actually decent. 22. And I still hear that player around us. You press 3, you'll pull out your torch. You press 3 again, you'll cycle through the objects on your belt. Same with 4. If I had more than one object on my belt, I would be cycling through it with 4. Who's that? Enemy player? Staring at me? Okay. Hello. Hello, hello. Oh, that's not very nice. So we'll use our throwing knives to keep him from getting too close. He's got his Y-hander. We definitely don't want to get hit by that. It's a good opportunity for the buckler to work. Basically, what we do is we move in and out of his attack range and just hit him as we can because that's why hunter hurts very, very badly. So he decided he doesn't really want to fight anymore, but he started it. So we'll finish it. Uh, the best thing the buckler about the buckler is that, oh hey, little boots upgrade, very nice. The rest of his stuff's okay. This y is kind of cute. We can we can drop our other weapon set and use it just for fun. Guess there's nothing wrong with that. We just loot his stuff. Whatever we feel like taking. Um, I don't really take too much of the gray cracked items because they're not really worth a lot. The white items are worth much more. And generally the quality goes uh, gray, white, green, blue, purple, orange, and gold. In terms of least uh, expensive to most expensive. And as you saw, this little tiny shield blocked his big two-handed sword and stopped his attacks instantly. You get good enough at blocking, you can actually... Um, well, at least with the buckler, you can stop those attacks because it's got a special property that knocks basically any weapon back. So, in this room... We're having a little few issues with skeletons, as you can see. There's a dead guy there. It looks like free loot to me. But we use our big sword to kill him quickly. I can't necessarily go over the attack patterns of all these skeletons because I'm a little busy fighting them. Swap back to the sword now that it's a one-on-one, -on -one, though. The spear skeletons are actually some of the harder skeletons. But their stab, you can always sidestep it. They have a uh, another swing that's like a horizontal swing that you can duck it. You can sidestep that one as well. I was trying to get him to do the horizontal swing. Uh, he did the overhead. Well, anyways. Actually not that great at fighting uh, spear skeletons. I'm still learning. But we keep on keeping on. Just uh, loot around, check this dead guy, see if he's got anything cool. Got a falchion. We're actually going to take that. Uh, in this game, the falchion is actually better than the arming sword. This helmet would be very nice too. Let me check our physical damage reduction from armor here. The moment... Vigor is a very strong stat because, like I said before, it doesn't really matter how much damage you do if you're dead. And Vigor increases our health. But for the moment, we'll focus on staying alive. Looting some chests. We've already fought one person who really wanted to kill me.
Oh, I hear another player. Oh, we got a skeletal axe man. Well, these skeletal axemen will probably be your nemesis. They are very difficult to fight, and their attacks are very long range. These axes are much bigger than that they would imply. So my best bet, as someone who is still learning to fight, fight them myself, is to bait their attack out and punish after they attack. That doesn't always work, as you see, but honestly, we just try our best. If I was in a much more open area, it would be much less likely to get hit by the Axeman's attack. But this is a good opportunity to show a um, the campfires. So my health is low, right? That's not good. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my second win, which heals me. Then I'm going to put this campfire down. When you put a campfire down, you press G to sit next to it. And what that does is it heals you over time while you're sitting next to the campfire. And it restores single use abilities like second win. So I put the campfire down, I sit down, and now you watch my HP go up. And if you look at my second wind ability, the bar is going up as well. Once the bar fills up fully, I have another charge of second wind. So campfires and second wind go very, very well together. So these red portals take you down further into the dungeon to what's called the Inferno. It is very, very dangerous down there, so we're not going to go down there in this video. But what we do see is a blue portal. Blue portals take you out of the dungeon, which is what we want to do. We want to leave with all our hard-earned loot. So let's go up, hit F, start opening it. As you notice, when I walk through that, uh, this effect is the swarm. It's kind of like a battle royale circle. Basically damages you while you're inside it. You can see my health steadily going down. There's another blue portal over there, actually. Missed that entirely. The longer you stay in it, well, it doesn't increase in damage, but it never stops dealing damage. You don't want that. So, you probably don't want to stay in the swarm as much as possible. Oh yeah, we got some loot. We got some green helmets. That's pretty cool. We got a little Zweihander. I think this is a good first run. You want to get out with any amount of gold you can. So, I think we'll leave. So you just walk into the portal. And it says adventure over, you can spectate. Seems that there's nobody to spectate, and then just hit escape and exit the lobby. We did it! Now we escaped with the loot. So in my opinion, I'm not personally a fan of this Wyander. I'm fighter, I don't really like the moveset. But what you can do, and take the weapon, move it to your stash, just like these two. You can drag it, or you can hold control and click it. Sorry, uh... Sorry, hold shift and click it. Right click it, that is. Yes, you can hold shift and right click it. I'm playing too much Path of Exile. Now, we have all this loot, but we need to turn it into gold. So, got a merchant. Collector and just click everything we want to sell to him. Tells you what you'll get. Bam! We got 50 gold. It's not much, but it's honest work. So now you got some greens, but unfortunately you cannot enter the normal dungeon with greens. So you have a choice to make. See, watch. Remove all items higher than common grade from your character and character inventory before entering the dungeon. So if you want to keep running normals, you can either take them off, put them in your stash. And you can save them to wear later for a high roller. Or you can do what I like to do and sell them for more gold. Ooh, 100 gold. Look at all that. 140. That's way more than we made from treasure. Bam. Now we're rich. Got a lot of money. Alright. And then as the, uh, the last part of this video, we're gonna go over here and check out these cool little shiny, uh, icons over the merchants here. Tavern Master. Click. Quest. Click. Comes with the territory. So you can read through this if you want some, uh, exposition. Click accept. Congratulations, you have a quest now. 
Skeletal skeletons. 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 Pretty simple quest. You just you basically complete it as you play the game. Same thing with the treasurer. Quest. Mimic some money. Kill mimics. We haven't seen a mimic yet, but they exist. That's about it. Some quests have um, requirements like breach level 5, blah, blah, blah. But other than that, I mean, quests are literally that easy. You just pick them up, do what they say. And we actually leveled up twice, so now we are level 3. We don't gain anything until level 5, at least in this version of the game. But hopefully, uh, that's a good starting point for everyone. And uh, we'll expand on this in the next video. See you, everyone. Uh, good luck in the dungeon.